Today on The Hookup, we're going to cover a slightly controversial subject, smart door locks and whether or not they pose a security risk to your home. We're going to take a look at some of the most popular and anticipated smart locks on the market today and figure out if any of them have a place in your smart home. Your home should be the place where you feel the safest, and technology should increase that feeling of safety, not decrease it. Adding cameras allows you to keep a watchful eye, and sensors give you insight into what's happening even when you're away. However, when these services are compromised and bad actors are able to gain access, the invasion of privacy can make it feel more unsafe than ever. It's this underlying uncertainty of security that makes people reluctant to modify the most basic security device in any house, the door lock. In this video, I'm going to show you that smart door locks, when implemented properly, actually significantly increase the safety and security of your home and have virtually zero risk of being remotely compromised. I'm going to test out five of the most popular and anticipated smart locks on the market. From least expensive to most expensive, we've got the $89 Wise Lock, the $109 Quickset 914, the $190 Yale Assure, the $210 Quickset Smart Code 916, and last, the $229 Alfred Locks DB2. At this point, all smart locks on the market should be able to deliver on a few key features. Number one, installation is fairly simple, requiring just a Phillips head screwdriver and about 15 minutes of your time. Number two, all of these locks maintain manual control from the inside of your house. And number three, these locks can provide you with additional information about the state and history of the lock to give you more peace of mind. Let's start with a quick comparison of the key differences in these locks. The Wise Lock and the Quickset 914 maintain a more traditional look by only having a keyway visible from the outside, while the Yale Assure, Quickset Smart Code 916, and Alfred DB2 all have external keypads for keyless entry. You can see that this specific version of the Alfred DB2 that I tested doesn't have a traditional key, but Alfred does offer a keyed version, and similarly, the Yale and Quickset are available in non-keyed touchpad-only varieties. The Wise Lock is a bit of a hybrid because it has an optional remote keypad that can be installed on or next to your door to add pin code functionality if desired. The keypads on these locks all operate with only slight differences. All four keypad locks have the ability to easily add and remove pin codes to allow someone to have temporary access to your house without giving them your main pin. And operation is similar as well. To operate these keypads, you place your palm over the screen to activate it, and then you enter your pin. The Alfred lock requires you to press the pound key after entering your pin, while the Yale Assure requires you to press the check mark. And the quick set automatically unlocks once the correct pin has been entered without any additional button presses. The Quick Set also has an additional feature to add some dummy key presses at the beginning of the sequence to prevent fingerprints and wear on the keys that are used for your pin. All the keypads work well and are nice and responsive, but I slightly prefer the lock-specific icons on the Quick Set keypads over the generic asterisk and pound symbols on the Alfred or the checkmark and gear icon on the Yale. All right, on to the actual locking mechanisms. All the locks run on four AA batteries and have similar torque when actuating the deadbolt. A major issue that I came across in the reviews for all smart locks was people noting that the motors were not strong enough to overcome the misalignment of their deadbolt and strike plate. In an attempt to simulate a mild to moderate misalignment, I used scotch tape to decrease the size of my strike plate opening, and I tested each motor's ability to lock and unlock the deadbolt with this increased friction. All the locks passed this test successfully, but it's important to note that even if you get a lock that can power through an imperfect alignment, it will significantly reduce the battery life, and as the battery drains, the power of the motor may also decrease. Honestly, it's best just to take care of the situation by correcting any alignment issues rather than selecting a lock that can power through them. On a related note, I wanted to see how each lock would respond if the deadbolt failed to actuate completely. And here's what happens. This seems like a pretty important feature that all these locks deliver on in their own way, including reporting a jammed lock state in their status. And speaking of statuses, each lock reports multiple different status messages, including the general state of the lock, something called the notification, and the detailed lock status. 
The Yale, Quickset, and WiseLocks did a great job reporting these statuses in their respective apps. But in my testing, the Alfred Lock was all over the place when reporting its state via Z-Wave in both the Samsung SmartThings app and Home Assistant, where the general state of the lock didn't follow the detailed lock status, and sometimes the detailed lock status was just completely wrong. I'm not sure if it was an issue specific to my Alfred lock or a general problem, but it's a huge deal and it needs to be fixed ASAP because reporting that a door is locked when it's unlocked is perhaps the biggest possible vulnerability that you could introduce. In fact, I think misinformation, not hacking, is the biggest risk of all these locks. And another potential issue that I found was the way that these locks have implemented the auto relock feature. Auto relock is great in concept and it does exactly what you would expect. After a specified amount of time, the dead will automatically re-engages if you forget. You wouldn't want this on a non-smart lock because the potential to lock yourself out of the house is very high. But on a keypad-based door lock, you can always unlock the door regardless of whether or not you have your phone or keys. The problem is that of the five locks that I tested, only the wise lock is able to determine if the door is open or closed. So if for some reason the door fails to close completely, the auto lock feature will engage the deadbolt and change the status of your door to locked, even though your door is wide open. Obviously, adding a simple contact sensor to your door and using an automation in Home Assistant or SmartThings solves this issue completely. But I'd love to see whatever technology Wise is using to detect the state of the door make it into these other door locks. But I'd also like to see Wise take some cues from these other brands. All these locks, except for the Wise Lock, are using Z-Wave, meaning adding them to a Z-Wave hub like SmartThings, Hubitat, or Home Assistant will allow you to integrate them with the rest of your smart home. And while the Wise Lock is technically Zigbee, it won't connect to any of your Zigbee hubs at this time and must use the included Wise Zigbee to Wi-Fi bridge and Wise Cloud app. The open source smart home community is already hard at work decoding the nuances of the WISE Zigbee protocol, so expect the WISE lock to eventually be compatible with Home Assistant via projects like Zigbee to MQTT, but don't expect it to easily integrate with things like SmartThings or Hubitat without using an additional cloud service like IFT. And now with that, it's time to talk about putting your locks on the cloud. But before we start, I wanted to make a general statement that compromising a lock rarely represents the easiest way to gain access to a building. Bricks are cheap and have a 100% success rate for opening windows, with very little skill involved. That being said, a common complaint that I hear about smart locks is that if compromised, someone can walk up to your home and enter through the door as if they were supposed to have access. But to illustrate that this concept is nothing new, I purchased a $20 lock picking snap gun, spent about an hour learning to use it, and here's what that entry looks like from the street. As I said before, it's up to you whether you want your smart lock to also include a physical key, but lock picking is a much more common skill than wireless protocol hacking. In fact, hacking the Zigbee or Z-Wave protocol, while technically possible, requires significantly more skill, knowledge, and access, since most of the known vulnerabilities involve listening in during the initial setup process. In other words, if a potential hacker doesn't know the exact date and time that you're planning on installing your smart lock and isn't within Z-Wave listening range, they're pretty much out of luck. Protocol-specific exploits are actually extremely uncommon, and most of the time, as it pertains to smart devices, we're incorrectly using the term hack when what we mean is compromise. You may have heard a recent story about a hacker who gained access to a ring camera in a child's room and used the two-way audio feature to talk to the child and encourage her to do bad things. While this behavior is unquestionably deplorable, in my opinion, calling it a hack takes the focus away from the immoral actions of this one bad actor and focuses them on some perceived vulnerability of ring cameras. In actuality, this hack was carried out by simply plugging in username and password combinations that were leaked from an unrelated website into the ring app until one of them worked. That's not exactly high skill or high tech. Wise has taken steps in the right direction, offering two-factor authentication when logging into their service. But no cloud service will ever be as secure as using a locally controlled option. With Zigbee or Z-Wave Lock, you can use a hub like Home Assistant or Hubitat and get all the added conveniences and security benefits without any of the potential negative impacts associated with cloud-based services. 
So far, this has mostly been a general overview of smart lock technology, but now it's time for me to give you my impressions of each lock individually. The Wise Lock delivers some serious value. By reusing your old deadbolt, you don't have to worry about matching your exterior finish or style, and it also allows them to cut the cost significantly. You're getting a lot of functionality here for just $89, and the Wise app is really well made and extremely responsive. It's got features like auto lock, specific pin code notifications, lock state tracking, and even door state tracking. Still, even with all this great stuff at a great price, I cannot get over the cloud-only integration. I don't feel comfortable implementing it in my own home, so I can't recommend it for you. If and when WISE allows their lock to join other Zigbee hubs for local control, it will get my overwhelming recommendation. But until then, I'd hold off. The Quickset 914 without any external keypad is an interesting concept, but I don't love it. Although it has important features like auto relock, without the external keypad, the potential to lock yourself out is pretty high. And unlike the WISE lock that includes Bluetooth backup control for the lock, the 914 can only be controlled via your Z-Wave hub. So if you're experiencing problems with your hub, you could potentially get locked out of your house if you didn't bring your key. The additional features on the Quickset locks are set using small dip switches located under the inside cover, which means you can't automate them and you probably won't be changing them very often after the initial setup. Also, another small nitpick that I have with the Quickset locks is that they are by far the loudest of all the locking mechanisms. I'm not exactly sure which circumstances would cause this to be an issue, but I thought it was worth mentioning. The Yale Assure Z-Wave lock is pretty great. Not only is it the lowest price lock to give us touch keypad functionality and Z-Wave connectivity, but I think it looks pretty nice too, and it operated flawlessly in all of my tests. I do have two small nitpicks for this lock. First, it has a big black battery cover on the inside, and while I understand the need to not have it be made of metal for Z-Wave antenna purposes, I'm not sure why it's not at least colored the same as the rest of the lock. And second, the included deadbolt feels the roughest when turning it. That's not to say that it's difficult to turn, but it almost feels like something is grinding inside the mechanism. The Quickset 916 has all the features of the 914 while adding a keypad to the exterior, making it significantly better in my opinion. The 916 is my favorite keypad due to its lock-specific icon buttons and decoy key presses. The Quickset 916 is also my favorite aesthetically, but I understand that that is largely a personal preference. My nitpicks for this lock are the same as the 914, which is that the additional options are inconvenient to change and that the actuation of the deadbolt is the loudest of the bunch. Last is the Alfred lock, which I wanted to love after seeing their wireless powered lock at CES. But after testing, I'm pretty underwhelmed. The DB2 is the most expensive lock that I tested, which is fine considering it has the most features, including Bluetooth, Z-Wave, and touch functionality. But aside from that, there were some pretty big problems. Inside the premium packaging is a lock that looks nice from the exterior, but the interior is a huge black plastic enclosure. The exterior keypad is responsive, but explaining to my wife and seven-year-old that they needed to hit the pound key after entering the code seemed unnecessarily complex, considering that icon could have just as easily been replaced with a key that said enter or okay or a picture of a lock. None of those problems matter at all when looking at the biggest problem, which is that the states that are reported by the Z-Wave module were wrong. My door often registered as locked when it was unlocked or unlocked when it was locked. Pressing the lock button via Home Assistant changes the status to manually locked by key cylinder or inside thumb turn, while it should read manually locked by RF. I'm hoping that these issues are just isolated to the specific Alfred lock that I tested and not common. I'm going to reach out to Alfred to see if there's a fix for these problems, and I'll post a sticky comment down below with those updates. So a quick recap. Smart locks, when controlled locally, are not easily hacked and are certainly less vulnerable than your current lock and key system. Furthermore, smart locks add additional features that not only increase the convenience of your lock, but also increase its security. On paper, my favorite lock is the Yale Assure because it has a very similar feature set to the Quickset 916, but for $20 less. However, I do plan on using the Quickset 916 on my own door because I prefer the look and I like that the key can be standardized between my interior garage door and the front door using the Quickset smart key system. If you've got something you'd like me to test, let me know down in the comments and I'll give it a shot. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel, which allows me to purchase products and do unbiased reviews like this one. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.